On today's episode, we are decking this thing out. Well, I'm building a roof deck anyway, don't get too excited. But I really am excited for this episode. I've been wanting to get back to this project for a long time. So check out my previous episodes where I installed the aluminum ladder rack. The forward section of the ladder rack is supporting 520 watts of solar, leaving just enough room at the back for a 5x7 roof deck. Now I have to wrap up a couple things with the ladder rack, but then we're going to move on to the deck. And the deck is comprised of steel strut channel and western red cedar. Mmm, I can smell it already. So good. So let's get started like I do with pretty much every project. Let's go save big money at Menards. All right, to start off with, we are heading to the slotted steel strut channel. So after a lot of contemplation, I landed on this product because it's relatively inexpensive. It's super versatile. They come in different profiles, different finishes, and it's strong stuff. Um, maybe not this one, John, put that one back. Now I know what you're thinking. Why are you going with steel? Everything else up to this point has been aluminum. Well, honestly, it's cost. Now they do make an aluminum strut channel. I can't find it anywhere locally. So I like McMaster Car for things like this. They have a great selection. Uh, prices seem competitive. They do get you with shipping a little bit, but their shipping is fast. Anyway, you can see here a 10 foot stick of this stuff. It's about $53 before shipping, so that's no good. And just for fun, let's check out extruded aluminum. Uh, it comes in different sizes. Uh, people love this stuff for framing things, for making different deck platforms. I've seen it used. The one and a half inch stuff, another 10 foot stick, $87 for the hollow or $104 for the solid. So it's just no comparison. The price of this has gone up a lot since the pandemic. It's too bad. So anyway, for 30 bucks, I can get 10 feet of this steel strut channel that's galvanized coated. Plus I'm gonna paint it, so it's gonna look great. So yeah, I ended up getting three. I'm only showing two, but I got three of the low profile strut. That's the nice thing about steel too, is I can get by with the low profile. It's gonna be plenty strong. And you can't forget the channel nuts, spring nuts. They go by different names, but I went with the 3 8 size. Got a few packs of those. Next, we're heading to the hardware department. We're gonna pick up the matching bolts and washers, both stainless. Next, I decided to go with these exterior coated construction lag screws to hold down the decking. And speaking of decking, that's what we're picking up next. We're going to head out to the lumber yard and pick up the Western Red Cedar. Oh man, this is like my favorite part. I love coming to the lumber yard, the cedar section. It smells so good. Oh, hey. So I'm going with the five quarter red cedar decking, which is actually a one by board, but whatever. Anyway, this next task, I don't wish on my worst enemy. <laughs> it's not that bad, but it's pretty bad. Finding six boards in this giant stack of lumber proved to be like a 10 minute task. I kid you not. Mm. All right, there it is. I got this. I can do it. <laughs> okay, I'll give you a little sneak peek so you can see how this comes together. So everything sits on top of the crossbars of the ladder rack. That's the strut channel. On top of that is a layer of cedar and on top of that cedar decking. So the first thing I had to do is install the last crossbar bracket and the last two crossbars. Now this should have been completed weeks ago with the rest of the ladder rack, but if you saw my previous videos, you'll remember I had a little setback. Now I'm getting ready to cut the strut channel in half with my cold cut miter saw. And by my, I mean my friend's miter saw, I'm borrowing it, <laughs> but it's awesome. Thanks again, John. So yeah, they call it a cold cut because the tooth blade removes material producing small metal chips. Any heat that is produced is transferred to the metal chips, which are expelled from the saw. The material being cut and the blade itself stay relatively cool. But the problem is you end up with thousands of red hot microscopic projectiles flying all over the place. At first I considered using a shop vac, but then I got smart and decided that probably wasn't the best idea. So then I just grabbed an apron, a face shield. I did my best to protect myself. And don't forget the hearing protection. This thing is wicked loud. Anyway, after I filed everything down, got the edges nice and smooth, it was time to paint. So I spent a great deal of time in the paint aisle looking at the back of dozens of cans, trying to find paint that works with galvanized surfaces, and I found most don't. 
Maybe it's a Rust-Oleum thing. I did manage to find this one primer that was compatible with galvanized steel. So I went ahead and put a few coats of that on. Then it was time to put on the paint and I realized that the paint I got was not actually good with galvanized steel. After looking online, I determined I wanted acrylic paint and Rust-Oleum is not acrylic typically. In fact, they specifically say not to be used on galvanized metal on pretty much every can that I looked at. But it really doesn't matter after you put primer on it is it really coming in contact with the galvanized coating? I did eventually find a compatible paint and applied it, and it's a perfect match to the rest of the trailer. So moving on, now I'm measuring and marking the strut for the channel nuts, and I discovered that the springs that are attached, they don't fit in this low profile strut, and they're not really needed. The regular profile strut, it helps keep the nut in place, but with the low profile, they don't really have anywhere to go, so I just was able to bend them a couple times, and the springs would just snap right off. All right, so next up is the cedar that will sit on top of the strut channel, and that needs to be cut in half. I bought that in a 10 foot length. I didn't go with five quarter decking for this layer. Instead, I went with a slightly cheaper one by six. So Bart, do you like the trailer so far? No, I didn't. What? That was rude. I don't have a cow, man. Don't have a cow, man. You don't have a cow. Okay, Since when do you speak? French? No, really, man. Do you do you like it? All right. After ripping the boards in half with my table saw, I began measuring and marking for the bolts that will eventually secure the boards to the strut channel. Okay, so the first step is going to be drilling through. Then go to this spade bit might seem crazy but you'll see next we go to my bigger bit goal is to take this is a 3 8 uh, one and a half inch bolt stainless and a 3 8 washer I wanted something that was really, really going to hold on and not split the board as I tighten it down. And keep in mind, this entire board is going to be supported by that strut. I can afford to go a little bit deeper. Okay. I'd say we're about halfway through the thickness of that board, which is, I don't want to go any more than that. That's that's a beautiful thing. All right, now I just have to do that 20 more times. It's like I know it's not the prettiest thing. So each bolt goes into a channel nut and each channel nut is positioned directly over a slot in the strut channel. I wasn't sure if I could get away with a shorter bolt or maybe I couldn't find a shorter bolt when I was at the hardware store, but anyway, this worked out great. <laughs> that's a beautiful thing. That's not going to go anywhere. All right. Okay. Yikes. That was messy. Ow. But it sure smells good. Why? All right, so now it's time to cut the cedar decking. So it was at this point that I realized I made kind of a costly mistake. You know the saying, measure twice, cut once? Well, I got another one for you. Check your building plans first, or else you'll be buying lumber at least twice. So I bought 10 foot boards thinking I could cut them in half and I'd have two five foot boards. I'm building a five by seven deck. The problem is I got the orientation wrong. Uh, it turns out I needed the seven foot length for my deck boards. At least I realized this before I cut them to five feet. That would have been an even more expensive mistake. 
All right, so now that the prep work is all done, it's time to put the strut channel up on the ladder rack. I was having a little trouble getting the strut attached to the crossbars of the ladder rack. I ended up having to pre-drill, and then I used the biggest self-tapping screws I could find to attach the strut to the crossbars. So each strut comes in contact with three crossbars, and at each crossbar, the strut is secured with two screws. So every strut channel is attached to the ladder rack with six screws total. I don't think they're going anywhere. So it's worth mentioning here that the strut channel, which will be the supporting framework for the decking, think of them as the deck joists. They're spaced out 16 inches on center, which is typical for decking. I was really working up a good sweat at this point. Anyway, the next step was attaching the cedar to the strut channel. That actually went pretty smooth, but then came the fun part of actually putting the decking on. The nice part was I was finally able to climb off the ladders, get up top, and be in a more comfortable position, but now I had the very daunting task of driving 120 lag screws into the decking. First, I spaced out the decking with a carefully selected piece of scrap wood. Then I hand selected another piece of scrap wood and made a simple template for pre-drilling the deck boards. I decided to offset the template with every other board. I believe this should lessen the chance of the underlying board splitting down the middle. I also pre-drilled the decking and underlying cedar as well as countersink every hole with a spade bit prior to driving in the lag screws, all in an effort to prevent future wood splitting and increase the overall rigidity and lifespan of the deck. These were a lot of extra steps that maybe not everyone would take, but when you're dealing with wood and you're dealing with a structure that's going to see a lot of vibrations, a lot of movement, I'm going to do everything I can to make it as solid as possible to minimize future repairs. This feels pretty awesome, not going to lie. So glad that's over. I don't think my video is going to do it justice just how much work it was. I knew the roof deck was going to be a pain in the butt. I just knew it was. It didn't disappoint. But I'm very happy with how this turned out. This is rock solid. It's not making a lot of noise when I walk on it. And it smells good. Every time it rains, a little dew in the morning, oh, the aroma of red cedar. A lot of people are gonna say, I would treat that decking or I would buy pressure treated lumber, but red cedar is naturally mold, mildew, rot, resistant. This should last years and you don't have to do anything to it. I mean, sure, you could seal it, but it just smells so good. So how can you cover that up? I and mean, I can picture having this thing parked at an awesome campsite. Maybe you got a beautiful sunset. You can just, uh, Look out. Yeah, I'm jealous of whoever gets this. I'm gonna be a little sad to see this go. But man, it's so hot. Okay, it's not super hot, but 80 degrees, full sun. This youper just wasn't made for that. Put a couple chairs up here if you want. Throw a blanket down. You could have a rooftop tent up here. Or like I said, you can put a kayak canoe across here. And the beautiful thing too is that Max Air fan that cover is all the way up. You could actually have stuff across here, I think, and have that fan up and running. That's the one thing that is kind of nice about this being a little higher off the trailer. And I don't know if anyone would ever want to do this, but you could take these caps off and insert some sort of lumber, a post, a post, and a post, and they'd all be connected. Then you'd have a fence or a railing up here. It's another option. I do a couple things differently. Um, I probably would do decking for the cross pieces uh, just because the screws ended up hitting the strut in a couple places so then I'd have to back out do a slightly different angle and I think if I did another five quarter decking board I wouldn't hit the metal. I did try uh, da, da, da. one screw I tried I didn't do the countersunk uh, with the spade bit just to see if it would split, and it did split a little bit. Probably took an extra half an hour to do those extra steps, but I think it was worth it. I wouldn't change that. I think I would have liked to go a little bit closer with the decking, but this was kind of the magic number. 10 planks, no partial planks, 
It definitely doesn't feel weird to walk on it, but I think those screws were perfect. I think you need that wider pan head screw to really bite and just pull it down. A traditional deck screw, it just goes right through. I just feel like it's inevitable for boards, then they're eventually going to come up. These weren't labeled as deck screws, they were labeled as outdoor coated construction screws. I don't foresee you having to do much with this deck for a long time, but I mean, that's the beauty of this design. You could replace a board if you need to. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully somebody finds this helpful. Woo doggy, oofta. <laughs> that's all I got left to say. All right, that's gonna do it for this episode. This guy is tuckered out. Be sure to check out the next episode when I review and install the ladder.